Section 8.5 could have really just been a continuation in, of Section 8.1. Um, there's a twist because the problems are a little bit harder, so I, I think I just threw it to the back of the section because of that. But this is another section of systems of equations. Each problem in Section 8.5 has two equations. The things that make these equations different than the equations that we did in sections 8.1 and 8.2 is that they're nonlinear equations, which means at some point I'm either going to have to factor or use the quadratic formula or some other strategy uh, like square rooting to get the answer to the question, whereas in sections 8.1 and 8.2 we're dealing with the linear equations and those don't need factoring or the quadratic formula or any sort of you know more sophisticated technique. In this section, I'm going to solve every single problem using the substitution method. That's kind of the first of the two methods we learned in section A1. And if you try to solve these problems using the elimination method, you'll probably make a mistake. So just to refresh your memory for the substitution method, which we're going to need to do is we're going to need to pick an equation, either the first or the second, it won't matter which, solve that equation for a letter, then substitute it into the other equation and solve. That's probably enough of a um, refresher. There's maybe even a little bit more to do, but we'll get to it in a second. I actually started recording this video yesterday and uh, didn't like what I recorded, so I decided to do it again. And I did pro problems one and two. One seemed harder than two, so I'm going to start off by doing problem one. So I need to pick an equation and solve it for a letter. Picking the top equation is not particularly hard to solve for y, nor is it particularly hard to solve the bottom for y. To solve the bottom for x would be tough because of the x as a cube, and I'd have to cube root to get the x solved for. To solve the top for x would be tough because I'd have to divide by 4 and it would introduce fractions. So it doesn't matter which of the equations that I pick, they're both easy to solve for y. I'm going to solve the top for y. So my step 1 in problem 1, solve the top equation for y. So I'm going to go 4x plus y equals to 2 and then minus 4x minus 4x. This will give me y equals 2. It might be easier if I write 2 minus 4x. So I'm going to write 2 minus 4x as opposed to 4x minus negative 4x plus 2. And see where that takes me. Now I'm going to substitute. So I'm done. I picked an equation. I solved the equation for a letter. Now I'm going to substitute and solve. What I'm going to do is go to the bottom equation and change that y to a 2 minus 4x. So I'm going to leave the x cubed alone. So this is my, my step 2, substitute and solve. So I'm going to do the substitution that I circled. I'm going to leave the x cubed and the minus 2 alone. And I'm going to put a 2 minus 4x. So a plus 2 and minus 4x equals to 0. And the 2's here are going to cancel. So as I go to my substituting and solving, this is the hard part. This is the part that um, if you have to take calculus, with, this is the part that's going to be hard in calculus. When you're in the middle of solving an equation that isn't just like 10 equations before it, knowing the strategy to use to solve is going to be really hard. And So this is going to be a really good section because it's going to make you um, remember different techniques kind of out of context. So 
Now I have an equation that's set equal to zero. I'm going to solve this by factoring. I'm going to factor out a common factor of x, and that x, when I factor it out from the x cubed, will leave me with an x squared. When I take an x away from the minus 4x, I'll be left with a minus 4. And I'm going to factor this even more. That x squared minus 4 also factors to x plus 2 times x minus 2. Not even done with the and solve part of this because I don't have answers for x. So I'm going to set each of the factors equal to 0. Any factor that has an x gives a solution. I should have written x plus 2 times x minus 2 there. I don't know why I wrote x plus 2 times x plus 2. I almost think I said x plus 2, x minus 2. So I took the three factors, set them equal to 0. That gives x equal to 0 for a solution. This gives x equal to negative 2 for a solution. This gives x equal positive 2 for a solution. I'm not done. I need to do a step 3. And for this one, it's going to pair each x for a, with a y. Or solve for y. So I have y equal to 2 minus 4x. And I'm going to use that. So first, when x equal to 0, I'm going to use y equals 2 minus 4x, but plug in a 0 for x. This will give me y equals 2 minus 0, which is 2. One of the three solutions to this problem is going to be the point 0, 2. I'm going to do the same thing for x equal to negative 2. Mainly plug negative 2 in for that x and get y equals 2 minus 4 times negative 2. That's going to give me y equals 2 plus 8 because that double negative goes positive. That will give me y equal to 10. And that's going to give me the solution x equal negative 2, y equal to 10. Last thing I need to do is plug in x equal to 2. When I plug x equal to 2 into this equation, I get y equals 2 minus 4 times 2. I'm out of room here, so I'll do that on my calculator. 2 minus 4 times 2. I'll get negative 6. And as a solution, that's going to give me 2 and negative 6. So my answer to problem 1 is going to be the point 0, 2, the point negative 2, 10, and the point 2, negative 6. I can't check this using RREF because that only works for linear equations. It doesn't work when one of the equations has an exponent. The easiest way to check this is by graphing both equations. What I'm going to do to check, I'm going to graph this equation in y1. I'm going to graph the bottom equation in y2. And graphically, these three points are going to be where the two graphs intersect. And that's what I'm doing when I'm solving this system of equations. I'm finding the points where the graphs intersect. Let me um, get this bottom one set up so I can graph it by minusing x cubed and plusing 2 from both sides. That will give me y equals minus x cubed plus 2. And in my y2, I'm going to equal my y in minus x cubed plus 2. So I'm going to graph this in y1, this in y2. This is all extra. I'm just doing it because I have the desire to check my answer. And let me see what happens here. So for y1, do 2 minus 4x. For y2, do negative x up arrow cubed plus 2. Two. I need a window to get high enough to see 10. I'm going to make my y's go a little bit higher than 10. My x's don't need to go that wide. I'm going to make my x's go between the 5's. My y's max go up to 15. The narrower I make the x's around the answers, the better I'll be, I'm going to be able to see the answers. So let me hit graph with this window. X is from negative 5 to 5 because the x answers are between negative 2 and 2. I could have did x is between negative 3 and 3 and that would have been fine. Now when I hit graph, I'm going to see the top equation, which is a line. 
the bottom equation, which is nonlinear, and they intersect one, two, three times. Super easy to find each one of these intersection points. You just hit second in the trace key, go down to option five that says intersect, then hit enter, and then trace. I'm gonna get close to this point up here, which is probably negative 210. Just get close to that point and hit enter three times. So I'm close to that point. I'm gonna hit enter once, twice, three times, and there's the negative 210 part of my answer. Let me do it again for that point zero two by going second calc, going down to number five that says intersect, and just trace and get as close as I can to that point and hit enter three times. So one, two, three, and that gives me y equal to two. This, this is equivalent to zero. This six, negative six e to the negative 15 means that e to the negative 15 means take the decimal, move it 15 places to the left. So you'd have a decimal, four, a negative, then a decimal, 14 zeros, and then, and then um, six, six one. And this means zero. So any e with a negative exponent on my negative, any e with a negative number on my calculator is going to mean zero. So this is my calculator's best it can do right now for the point zero two. And you can kind of see that's the point zero two. It's sitting right on the um, y-axis. And if I look at a table uh, for next to zero, I see two in both the y's. Lastly, let me get that point two negative six by going second trace, going down to number five that says intersect, hitting enter, get as close as I can to that point, and hit enter one, two, three times and it gives me the two negative six. All right, so done with number one. I'm not gonna do number two. I'll move on to the next page. Huh. So yesterday I came in and started doing this section. I made a mistake on the first problem and I decided I was too tired to do the section. So I moved on and got the first problem right today. I started doing problem four and I made an error. So I'm gonna redo problem four. Hopefully that's not a sign of things to come. So our problems three and four are enough alike that I feel good about doing four. And the first step I need to do is pick an equation and solve for a letter. Solving either the, the bottom equation for either letter wouldn't be good because you'd have to square root to get the letter solved for. And solving the top equation for x wouldn't be good because you'd have to divide by three. I'm gonna solve this top for y to get started. So my first step, I'm gonna solve the top for y. And that's super easy to do. I'm gonna minus three X from both sides. And on the right hand side, it's gonna turn out probably to make my algebra easier to follow if I write five minus three X as opposed to minus three X plus five. Done with kind of the first step. Now I'm gonna substitute and solve. I have to substitute into the equation I haven't been using. So into the bottom equation for that y, I'm gonna put five minus three x. And this is where I just messed up. I forgot the three part. I just wrote five minus x. And if you start to write something down wrong, whoa, if you start to write something down wrong, you can't get it right. So into this equation, I'm gonna leave that x squared and x squared. I'm gonna leave the plus sign a plus sign and I'm gonna change the y squared to five minus three x squared. And I still have the equal to five. So this is just about to be the second time in a row that I made a mistake that would have doomed me. All right, so let me try to solve this. And to solve this, I need to clear that parentheses of five minus three x squared. And five minus three x squared, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need to write it without the exponent to square it. So to square five minus three x, it's a foiling problem. Uh, to do it, you have to go first are five times five, which are 25. The outers are five times minus three x, which is minus 15 x. The inners are minus three x times five, which is a minus 15 x. The lasts are minus three x times minus three x, which is a plus nine x squared. So I'm gonna combine those terms and write in pink again, 
my next line. So I'm going to get x squared and an equal 5 from the initial version of the line above it. And this I'm going to write down as plus 9x squared, which is the first term, the highest exponent term, and then minus 30x for those two terms. They don't cancel because they cancel. You'd have to have one positive and one negative, and then plus 25. I'm going to combine these two terms real quickly. This is a 1x squared and a 9x squared, which is going to be 10x squared. And then I'm going to minus 5 from both sides. I get 10x squared minus 30x plus 20 equals to 0. This can be solved by the quadratic formula. It can be solved by factoring. It also could be reworked a little bit before I do either of those. If any problem has an equal sign and a common factor that doesn't have a letter, you can divide every term by that common factor and not change the answer. So that's what I'm going to do to make my life easier here. So dividing through by 10 is going to give me with x squared minus 3x plus 2 equal to 0. If you can't factor that, use the quadratic formula. I know that that factors into x minus 1 times x minus 2. And then I'll set the x minus 1 equal to 0 and get x equal to 1. The x minus 2 equal to 0 and get x equal to 2. So I did my first step. I solved the top for y. Did my second step. Just now I substituted and solved. And now I'm going to move on to my third and final step. I'm going to solve for y. So y is 5 minus 3x. When x equals to 1, I'm going to plug 1 in for that x. I'm going to get y equals 5 minus 3 times 1, which is going to be 5 minus 3, which is going to be 2. That's going to give the answer x equal to 1, y equal to 2. When x equal to 2, y is going to equal to 5 minus 3 times 2, y is going to equal 5 minus 11, y is going to equal minus 6, and that's going to give me the answer x equal to 2, y equal to minus 6. I claim my answer for number 4, those two points. So my answer is going to be the point 1, 2, and 2, negative 6. And this one's going to be clunky to check on my calculator by graphing because that equation's hard to solve for y. So I'm going to check. You don't have to have to check these. Graphing is the way I prefer to check. But if it's hard to solve an equation for y, that's not really the way I'm going to go. So let me um, check 1, 2 by going to the top equation and going 3 times 1 plus 2 equal to 5, and making sure that simplifies to the, a true statement. That simplifies to 5 equal to 5. Let me go to the bottom equation and plug a 1 in for x and a 2 in for y and get 1 squared plus 2 squared equals to 5. That's going to be 1 plus 4 equal to 5, or 5 equal to 5. So 1, 2 is definitely a solution. Let me move on to the harder one, 2, negative 6. Top equation, plug in 2 for x, uh, and negative 6 for y. It's not w working in the top equation, because I get 3x plus negative 6 has to equal 5. This is 6 plus negative 6 equals 5. This is 0 equal to 5. I've messed up somewhere. Oh, here's where I messed up. This right here came out to 5, not minus 11. It should be 5 minus 6. And 5 minus 6 should be a negative 1. I'm tempted to re-record the video, but it's not such a bad thing when I make a mistake. So what happened was I tried to check, 
I got a false statement. I knew this was wrong, so I started searching, and I got lucky, and I found it right here. When I tried to find the Y there, I plugged 2 in for that X. I got 5 minus, and then I wrote something wrong. Like 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So the answer is not 2 negative 6. It's supposed to be 2 negative 1. This apparently is not the best time to be doing a video because I've made you know, two mistakes already. Let me check 2 negative 1 because 2 negative 6 is not a solution. So moving back, and now I'm going to check 2 negative 1. So a top equation, go 3 times 2 plus negative 1, see if that equals to 5. This will give me 6 minus 1 equal to 5, which gives me 5 equal to 5. Bottom equation, do 2 squared plus negative 1 squared equals to 5. This will give me 4 plus 1 equal to 5, which is 5 equal to 5. So I'll just leave that in the video. There's more than likely, as I'm watching this video this summer, I'll probably put a little pop-up saying, whoops, that's a mistake. And uh, it is what it is. But I mean, that's, there's almost no way to escape making mistakes on these. So checking is really, really a great idea. Because when you check, then you know your answers are right. So give number three a go. I don't want to steal all your problems, but I kind of think that as I look, 5 and 6 are different enough where I'm going to do 5. So if you can, pause the video and do 5 and then come back and watch me do it. Probably the best step for number 5 is to, uh, number 5, to start, I'm going to solve the top for y. So it starts off x squared plus y equal to 0. I'm going to minus x squared from both sides and get y equals to minus x squared. Now I'm going to substitute a negative x squared in for that y. And there's already a minus in front of it, so I'm, now I'm going to substitute and solve. There's already a minus in front of the y. I'm going to pick up another minus, which is going to give me a double minus. So I have 8x squared minus 4x minus, and then negative x squared equal to 0. I put the negative x squared in the parentheses to separate it from that negative, but the double negatives are going to go positive. So I'm going to get 8x squared minus 4x plus, I'm going to write 1x squared equals to 0. I'm going to combine the 8x squared and 1x squared and get 9x squared minus 4x equals to 0. I'm going to solve this by factoring. There's a common factor of an x that I'm going to factor out. I'm going to get x times 9x minus 4 equal to 0. I'm going to set x equal to 0 and get an answer of 0. And 9x minus 4 equal to 0 and get an answer of 4 ninths. To get that answer of 4 ninths, I have to add 4 to both sides. That will give me 9x equal to 4. And then divide both sides by 9. That will give me x equal to 4 ninths. Now I need to solve for y. For the first one, um, I won't mess up. The second one, I might mess up. I might have to think of this as negative 1 times x squared. Um, I'm going to check these. If I don't throw the negative 1 in front of the x squared, you might mess up when you find um, when you plug the 4 ninths in. Not so much when you plug the 0 in. When x is equal to 0, I'm going to plug um, that x right into there and get y equals negative 1 times 0 squared. That's going to give me negative 1 times 0, which is 0. And that's going to be the solution 0, 0. For x equal to 4 ninths, I'm going to write y equals negative 1 times 4 ninths squared. And 4 ninths squared, you square the 4 and you square the 9. So this is going to give me y equals to negative 1. And then 4 squared is 16. 9 squared is 81. So you get y equals negative 1 times 16 over 81. 
that will give me y equal negative 16 over 81 just because when you multiply by negative 1 you just flip the sign that gives me the solution 4 ninths comma 16 over 81 that worries me to say the least so for problem 5 I think my answer is 0 0 and 4 ninths comma negative 16 over 81. A bit worried about that, so I'm going to take the time to check. One equation at a time, one solution at a time. The easy one is 0, 0. When I go to go check 0, 0 in the top equation, I'm going to go 0 squared for that x squared, that you can't see, plus 0 for that y equal to 0. That's going to simplify to 0 equal to 0 just fine. In the bottom of the equation for checking, I'm going to go 8 times 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 0 equals to 0. All these pieces have 0, they turn into 0, and you get a true statement. This is this one that worries me. In the top equation, I have to go 4 ninths squared plus negative 16 over 81. And that needs to be 0. Let me just do that on my calculator so I don't have to be clever. So parentheses 4 divided by 9 squared plus parentheses negative 16 divided by 81. And I get 0, so it works in that one. And now for this one, put in 4 ninths for that x. So I'm going to go 8 times 4 ninths squared minus 4 and then plug in 4 ninths for that x and then minus and then put the y in a, in a parenthesis because it's negative minus negative 16 over 81 and that has to be 0 just going to enter that on my calculator so 8 parentheses 4 divided by 9 squared minus 4 parentheses 4 divided by 9 minus parentheses negative 16 divided by 81 when I hit enter, it better give me 0 because the right hand side is already 0, which it does, so I know my answer for number 5 is correct. So I won't do number 6. Gosh, I can't make up problems like this on the fly. And as I stare at 7 and 8, 7 just is different enough for 8 that I'm not sure that you could do it by yourself. So I'm going to do 7. 7 and 8 are nice because I think I could get the answers graphically. Because they're both solved for y, I could enter the top equation in y1, the bottom equation in y2, sketch a graph, and any place where the graphs intersect is going to be a solution. Let me see if I can get the solutions for problem 7 right off the bat. So y equals y1, I'm going to put negative 2x squared plus 2. y2, I'm going to do 2x up arrow 4 minus 4x squared plus 2. We go back to a zoom standard. I really don't know what the window should be, but I'm looking to find out where the graphs cross. Oh gosh, I'm going to need the graphs cross a bunch right in here. And to see that, I'm going to really, really crunch the windows down. I'm probably going to make my x's go from the threes and maybe the y's go from the threes. I'm going to change my window, negative three to three on the x's, negative three to three on the y's, and see if I can see the intersection points better. I don't know if I can. Looks like there's one, two, three intersection points, but I'm not sure of that, but it looks like they cross right there right there and right there. And my guess is that's the point negative uh, one zero, negative one zero, one zero, and zero one. Maybe negative two zero, two zero, and zero two. I can't tell. So I'm gonna go second calc, go down to option five. The first point, if I hit enter, 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 it's gonna give me that point right there of zero two. So one of the answers is the point zero two. I think these are two zero and negative two zero. So second calc, intersect. I'm going to walk off to the left to try to find this point and hit enter, enter, enter. And that's negative one zero as opposed to two zero. And then second calc, intersect, go all the way off to the right. It's probably positive one zero then. And then enter, enter, enter once I get there. 
close enough, enter, enter, enter. So the answer to problem seven is this. If this is what you did on the test, you wouldn't get any credit. You need to do the algebra. Algebra is probably going to be messy. The algebra that I'm going to do in problem seven is I'm going to take the top equation and substitute it into the bottom equation. The top equation is already solved for y, so I'm just going to replace the y in the top equation into the bottom equation. So I don't really have to do the first step because the top equation is already solved for y. I'm moving right on to the second step of the substitute and solve. So I'm going to go negative 2x squared plus 2, changing that y to negative 2x squared plus 2, equals 2x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 2. I certainly have to get this set equal to 0 so I can solve by factoring. So I'm going to plus 2x squared and minus 2 from both sides. Made the right hand side messy, the left hand side 0. On the right hand side I'm going to bring down my 2x to the fourth the negative 4x squared and positive 2x squared combine to be a negative 2x squared. The 2's cancel. That's a really good thing. Now I'm going to factor out a common factor of 2x squared, which means I'm going to divide the numbers by 2 and take away 2x's. So from the first term when I factor out a 2x squared, the 2 came out front. From the 4x's, two of them came out front. There were two left. I'm going to bring down the minus sign. The second term I factored out entirely. If you factor out a term completely, you leave a 1 where it was. That x squared minus 1 is going to factor more into x plus 1 times x minus 1. So now I'm going to set 2x squared equal to 0, x plus 1 equal to 0, and x minus 1 equal to 0. The Negative 1 and positive 1 are going to come out from there. For this one, I'm going to minus 1 from both sides and get x equal to negative 1. For this one, I'm going to plus 1 from both sides and get x equal to positive 1. This is the trickier one. This is the one that's going to give me a 0. And what I'm going to do is divide by 2 and get x squared equal to 0. I'm going to write it without the exponent. That gives me x times x equal to 0. And then I'm going to set each of the factors equal to 0. And that just gives me x equal to 0. For each x I need to get a y, I can use either equation. I'm going to use the top equation now to solve for y. So I'm into the last step of my answer. I have the three x's of 0, negative 1, and 1. For each x I need to get a y. For the first x, I'm going to go y equals negative 2 times 0 squared plus 2. This piece with a 0 is going to turn into a 0. This is going to give me y equal to 0 plus 2, which is 2. And that's going to give me the 0, 2 part of this, because the x was 0 and the y is 2. So that gives me 0, 2. For the next one, I'm going to plug into that, because that's the easier equation. I'm going to go y equals negative 2 times negative 1 squared plus 2. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1. So this is going to give me y equals negative 2 times positive 1 plus 2. That will give me y equals negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. So I'm going to pair the negative 1 with 0. And lastly, when x is 1, I'll plug a 1 in there. Get y equals negative 2 times 1 squared plus 2. Do the exponent first. 1 squared is 1. So this will give me y equals negative 2 times 1 plus 2. This will simplify to y equals negative 2 plus 2, which is y equal to 0. And that will give me the third answer that I came up with, 1, 0. Really wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So um, I won't do 8 just again because your 7 was what I chose to do on this page. At some point, I'm going to leave you some problems, so let me let you have this problem. When you start number 9, the easiest thing to do would either be to solve the top for y or the bottom for y. Wouldn't matter that both are going to give the same answers. For my problem 10, I definitely wouldn't solve the top for y because I'd have to divide by 2. That would get a fraction. I wouldn't solve the bottom 
for x because I'd have to divide by 3, that would get a fraction. I wouldn't solve the bottom for y because I'd have to square root and that would be a mess. My first step in number 10 is I'm going to solve the top for x. So I'm going to get x minus 2y equals to 1 and I'm going to add 2y to both sides. I can write 1 plus 2y or 2y plus 1. Because the y is positive, I don't mind having it written first. Done with the first step. Now I'm on to the sub and solve. So I need to substitute into the bottom equation. Into the bottom equation, I'm going to take that x and make it 2y plus 1. So I'm going to get 3 times 2y plus 1 minus y squared equals to 8. Clear the parentheses by going 3 times 2y is 6y. 3 times 1 is plus 3. Minus y squared equals to 8. Because there's a square, I want to set it equal to 0 and solve by factoring. Because the y squared is negative, I'm going to move everything to the right-hand side. I'm going to minus 6y, minus 3, and plus y squared. I snuck the 3 under the 8 just because I needed I, those were like terms that were going to be combined. On the left side, I forced everything to cancel. And on the right side, the 8 minus 3 is going to give me a 5. I'm going to write it last because the constant generally goes last. The y squared and the minus 6y have to stay on the right side. And I'm just going to write them in a good order so I could factor with the square term written first. Now I'm going to factor that. I should have a plus 5 because the 5 was positive. I'm going to factor that into y minus 1 times y minus 5. Then I'm going to go y minus 1 equal to 0, y minus 5 equal to 0. I'll get y equal to 1 and y equal to 5. Not good enough because I need an x for each y. So the first y I'm going to pl plug into that and get x equals 2 times 1 plus 1. That's going to give me x equals 2 plus 1, which is x equal to 3. That's going to give me the solution 3 comma 1 because you write the x first and the y second. For the next y, I'm going to plug 5 in for that and get x equals 2 times 5 plus 1. That gives me x equals 10 plus 1, which x is 11. That's 11 comma 5. So I claim that these are my answers for number 10. If I want to, I can check. I probably should. So 3, 1, and 11, 5. Let me just check right on my calculator. So for the top one, I'm going to plug 3 in for that x. So type a 3. And then the minus sign then the minus sign, and then the 2, and then for the y, I'll plug in parentheses 1. And when I hit enter, that should give me the right side of 1. Works fine. Move down to the bottom equation for the 3, 1. I'll go 3 parentheses, 3 for the x, minus, and then 1 squared for the y squared. And when I do that, I better get 8 because the right side is 8. And I get 8, so that checks. 11, 5 now, top equation. Plug 11 in for that x and then a minus two parentheses, five for that y. When I hit enter, I better get one because of the one that's there. That works. Last one, I'm going to go three and plug 11 in for that x, minus, and then five squared, and I better get an eight. Works perfectly, so I've checked my answers a lot quicker just because the videos are getting kind of long. So give number nine a go. All right, um, I'm going to do 11 for you just again because it just they're just different enough that I, I'm not happy with um, just doing um, my problem. So pause the video and see if you can do number 11. For number 11, um, you can solve the top for y by adding y to both sides. would be completely fine. You can solve the bottom for y or bottom for x. My first step is I'm going to solve the bottom for x. If you have a different first step, it doesn't mean you won't get the right answer. If you don't make an algebra mistake, you'll get the right answer. 
So I'm going to take this x minus y equal to 0 and solve it for x by adding y to both sides. This gives me x equal to y. And now I'm going to substitute into the top equation. I'm going to change this x into a y. I don't really need a parenthesis because it's just a single y. So my substituting part I'm going to change that x to a y. I'm going to get y squared minus y equal to 0. I'm going to solve that by factoring. I'm going to pull out a common factor of a y and get y times y minus 1 equals to 0. This is going to give me y equal to 0 and y minus 1 equal to 0. The y equal to 0 is already done. For this one, I'm going to add 1 to both sides and get y equal to 1. And now this is the easiest solving for x that's possible. I'm just going to take this y and plug it in for that and get x equal to 0, which is going to give me the point x equal to 0, y equal to 0. And then I'm going to plug in this y for that, and that's going to give me x equal to 1. That's going to give me the solution 1, 1. So the answer for number 11 is 0, 0, and 1, 1. Let me check. The top equation is x squared minus y equal to 0. If I plug 0 and 0 in, I'd get 0 squared minus 0 equal to 0, which is 0 equal to 0. Now for the bottom equation, it's x minus y equal to 0. If I plug 0 and 0 in, I get 0 minus 0 equal to 0 which is 0 equal to 0. So 0, 0 checks just fine. Let me move on now and check 1, 1. In the top equation, I'm going to go 1 squared minus 1 equals 0. So give me 1 minus 1 equal to 0, which is 0 equal to 0. Into the bottom equation, I'm going to go x minus y, or 1 minus 1 equal to 0. And that will also give me 0 equal to 0. So those were super easy to check. All right. I'll do 14 on the next page. And it certainly um, shouldn't be that hard to do. And I'm going to do 14 on my calculator because both the equations are solved for y. That makes it a really good calculator candidate for my checking. So for 14, because both equations are solved for y, I'm just going to graph them both. The top one is negative x. The bottom one is x cubed plus 5x squared plus 3x. Let me go back to a zoom standard. There's the line y equals negative x. And it looks like it crosses 1, 2, 3 times. I'm going to have to crunch my window down. I'm going to make the x's tighter and the y's tighter. When I make the y's tighter, I might lose this topper there, but I just need to see that point, that point, and that point. Maybe I'm going to make my x's and my y's go between the 4's, and let's hope. So window negative 4 to 4, negative 4 to 4, graph it. The line I don't lose. I only see two of the points. It means I didn't see the third one. Let me find these two real quickly. Second calc intersect it starts out right there. I hit enter, enter, enter. It gives me that point zero, zero. So for problem 14, one of the answers is zero, zero. The second answer, second calc intersect, trace over to that and hit enter three times. Gives me negative one, one. I'm going to have to blow up the window to see that other point. Let me go back to a zoom standard. So I could see the other point fine in the zoom standard. I just couldn't see those points around the origin. So I found that point 0, 0, that point negative 1, 1. I'm going to find this point now by going second calc, intersect, trace away to that point, get close to it, and hit enter three times. And I get negative 4, 4. So that should be the answer. And it's not even going to be that hard to get. So I get those three answers. What I'm going to do is go directly into step two of the substituting. I'm going to change the y 
in the bottom equation the negative x. The first step is done. The top equation is already solved for y, so I could go straight into substituting. And I'm going to consider this negative 1x instead of negative x equals x cubed plus 5x squared plus 3x. Since there's an exponent, I set it equal to 0. I'm going to add 1x to both sides. This gives me 0 equals to x cubed plus 5x squared plus 3x. Whoops, plus 4x, because 3x plus 1x is 4x. The factor now, the first step in my factoring is I'm going to pull out a common factor of an x. When I take an x away from the x cubed, I have an x squared. When I take away an x from the plus 5x squared, I have a plus 5x. When I take an x away from the plus 4x, it hardly looks like a plus 4x, I have a plus 4. The inside of the parentheses factors more. It factors into x plus 4 times x plus 5. And then I'm going to set x equal to 0 to get that part of that answer. And then x plus 4 equal to 0 and get x equal to negative 4 for that. And then this is factors into x plus 4 times x plus 1. Ugh. Lucky I had the answer in front of me. I might have not noticed that, but that was factored wrong. And then I'll, after I refactor it, x times x plus 4 times x plus 1, I'll set the x plus 1 equal to 0 and get x equal to negative 1. For each x I need to get a y, I'm going to use this one. The first one I'm going to get y equals to negative 0. Negative 0 is the opposite of 0, which is just 0. That's going to give me the point 0, 0. For the second one, I'm going to get y equals negative. Plugging in a negative 4, I get negative, negative 4. The double negative goes positive, and I get positive 4. That's the solution, negative 4, positive 4. And for the last one, I get y equals negative, that's in front of the x, and then negative 1 for the x, so I produce a double negative, which I'll write as a positive. That's going to give me the point negative 1, 1, which are all the answers that, that I knew. On problem 13, you should be able to do yours graphically at first as well. I made a mistake doing problem 16, which I really shouldn't have made because for each one of these problems, if I took the time or take the time to check my answers, then I shouldn't have had a mistake in the video, but I didn't check my answer and I left a mistake. So let me do this problem by substitution and I won't do 15, that'll be for you, so I'll do number 16. And to get started on number 16, the thing that seems most obvious to me is to solve the top equation for x and substitute in the bottom. So the equation x plus 2y equals 0, that's simple to solve for x. I can just minus 2y from both sides. If you solve this for y, eventually you'd have to divide by 2 and that would create a fraction. If you tried to solve either the bottom equations for x or y, you'd have to do square root plus or minus square root and that just wouldn't be a great idea. And most of these problems in this section, you can't really do the elimination method. So that my first step is to solve the top for y and for my second, I'm going to sub into the bottom equation. So for this x, I'm going to change it to minus 2y. And I'll need to do that minus 2y in a parentheses because that x is being squared. So my substituting is going to give me minus 2y quantity squared minus y squared equals to 3. And then this minus 2y squared really means minus 2y times minus 2y. So I'm going to multiply the 2's. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. I'm going to multiply the y, y times y is y squared. That's so I'm going to clear that parentheses. And then this minus y squared, I should probably think of it as a minus 1y squared. It's going to help me simplify the left-hand side when I do that. So now on the left-hand side, I have like terms. 4y squared minus 1y squared is 3y squared. So I get 3y squared equals to 3. 
I can divide both sides by the common factor of 3. Anytime you have a common factor that doesn't have a letter in a problem that has an equal sign, you can divide that common factor away without impacting the answer. This is going to give me y squared equals to 1. Right now I could solve by square root plus or minusing square root right as the problem sits. I could just go square root of y squared equals plus or minus the square root of 1 and get y equals plus or minus 1, which is two different answers for y, positive and negative 1. The other choice I would have had when I got to stare at that y squared equals to 1, solving with square roots is fine if you remember to do the plus or minus. If you solve with square roots and don't do the plus or minus, you're going to lose points on the test. Another way to solve y squared equal to 1 would be to solve by factoring. But in order to solve by factoring, you'd have to set the problem equal to 0. So I'd have to go y squared minus 1 on both sides. Go y squared equals 1 minus 1 minus 1, y squared minus 1 equal to 0. Factor this into y plus 1 times y minus 1 equals to 0. And then you'd go y plus 1 equal to 0, set each, setting each factor equal to 0. Setting the y plus 1 equal to 0, you'd get y equal to negative 1. Setting the y minus 1 equal to 0, you'd get y equal to 1. So those are my answers for y. So the next thing I need to do is I need to pair each y with an x. So I have two different y's. I have y equal to 1. And to pair my y with an x, I'm going to plug the y into this equation. I can plug it into any of the equations, but that's the nicest way to, to get the x that pairs with the y. So for y equal to 1, I'm going to plug in 1 for y into x equals minus 2y. That's going to give me x equal to minus 2. And as part of my solution, that's x equal minus 2y equal to 1. We'll write that solution as a point. The second y that I have is y equal to negative 1. And when I go to pair it with an x, I'll take this negative 1, plug it into that y, and get x equals negative 2 times negative 1, which gives me x equal to positive 2. And as a solution, that's x equal to 2, y equal to 1. I think that the answer to number 16 should be the point positive 2, positive 1, and the point negative 2, positive 1. And, whoops, that's not right, because that's positive 2, negative 1. This is the kind of mistake that I made when I did the video the first time I made a mistake with the sign. So it should be positive 2 for x, negative 1 for y, negative 2 for x, positive 1 for y. I'm going to write that again. So it's 2, negative 1, and negative 2, positive 1. When I take the second here to check, I'll show you that both of these work. So let me just pull out another sheet of paper and check both these answers. So the two answers I want to check, I want to check the answer x equal 2, y equal to negative 1 by going to the top equation, plugging 2 for x and negative 1 for y, making sure that's a true statement, doing the same to the bottom equation. In the bottom equation, plug in 2 for x, negative 1 for y, and make sure that's a true statement. So for the point 2, negative 1 to be a solution, both of these statements need to be true. This one gives me 2 plus negative 2 equal to 0, which simplifies to 0 equal to 0, so it works in the top equation. And the bottom equation, this gives me 4 minus, and negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1. That gives me 4 minus 1 equal to 3, which is 3 equal to 3. So 2 negative 1 is absolutely a solution because it works in both equations. If I wanted to also check the other solution of negative 2, positive 1, I'd go to the top equation, plug negative 2 in for the x, 1 in for the y, make sure that checks, and do the same for the bottom. Let me just do this checking real quickly because this is simple. This gives me negative 2 plus 2 equal to 0. That simplifies to 0 equal to 0. 
plugging negative 2, 1 in the bottom equation using the proper parentheses, I'd go negative 2 squared minus positive 1 squared equal to 3. That would give me 4 minus 1 equal to 3, which is going to give me 3 equal to 3. So every single solution needs to be checked in every single equation. You have to get every statement true for a solution to actually be a solution. So the answer to 16 are these two points x equal 2, y equal negative 1, x equal to negative 2, y equal to 1. You should write your solutions pairing the x with the appropriate y. All right, I'm going to cut and paste this into the video, and there's going to be, you know, a hiccup again. As I look at ours, um, I'll wind up doing two more problems. Let me do 17, and then on the next page I'll do 20. So for 17, the probably the best first step is to solve the top for x. I see x minus 7y plus 6 equals to negative 4. I'm going to plus 7y and minus 6 from both sides. The left side will have an x. The number on the right hand side is going to be a negative 10 because the 4 and the 6 have the same signs and then the 7y is going to be plus. Now I'm going to substitute, and where I'm going to substitute is right there. So I'm going to go into the substituting and solving part. I'm going to get 7y minus 10 squared, ooh, plus y squared equals to 20. I'm going to need to FOIL the 7y minus 10 probably going to want a 1 in front of that y squared. So into my foiling now, first are 7y times 7y, which is 49y squared. Outers are 7y times minus 10, that's minus 70y, forgot the y there. Inners are minus 10 times 7y, which is minus 70y. Lasts are minus 10 times minus 10, which is plus 100, and then plus 1y squared equals to 20. On the left hand side I'm going to add the 49y squared and the 1y squared and get 50y squared. I'm going to combine the minus 70y and the minus 70y and get minus 140y. Set it equal to 0 by minusing 20 from both sides. Divide by 10 to make the numbers decent. Solve that. You could use a quadratic formula or you could factor. I'm going to solve it by factoring, which means I'm going to do off to the side bottoms up factoring. So I need to, to solve this problem, I'm going to bottoms up factor the 5y squared minus 14y plus 8. First step is I'm going to multiply by 5 and rewrite. I'm going to multiply those and get y squared minus 14y plus 40. Then I'm going to factor that factors into y minus 10 times y minus 4. And then I'm going to divide by 5 reduce and bottoms up. First fraction 10 over 5 is a 2. Second fraction doesn't reduce so I bottoms up. So the thing that needs the factor factors into y minus 2 times 5y minus 4. So back into my problem I'm going to change this to y minus 2 times 5y minus 4. Then I'm going to set y minus 2 equal to 0 and get y equal to 2, set 5y minus 4 equal to 0, add 4 to both sides and get 5y equal to 4, divide both sides by 5 and get y equal to 4 fifths. For each x I need a y, and x is 7y minus 10. So for this y, I'm going to get x equals to 7y minus 10, which is 7 times 2 minus 10. That's 14 minus 10, which is 4. For this y, <laughs> x is going to equal to 7 times 4 fifths, 
minus 10. No desire to do that. So 7 times 4 divided by 5 minus 10. Math. Enter, enter. I get x equal negative 22 over 5. That's going to give me my solutions with the x first and the y second. First solution is going to be 4 comma 2, x equal to 4, y equal to 2. Second one, x equal to negative 22 over 5, y equal to 4 over 5. Let me check these because those are nasty solutions. Well, 4, 2 is not so nasty. And I'm going to check them right on my calculator without showing. So top line, plug 4 in for x. And then minus and then 7 and then parentheses 2 for the y plus 6. This has to equal negative 4 because the right side is negative 4. Works there. 4, 2 into the bottom one. First 4 squared. It's positive so it doesn't need a parentheses. Plus and then 2 squared. And when I had equals, it has to give me 20. Works fine there. Done with the first. On to the second one. For the second one, top equation, I'm going to go negative 22 divided by 5 minus 7. And then for the y, parentheses, 4 divided by 5 plus 6. When I hit enter, I need to see negative 4 because the right-hand side is negative 4. So I put negative 22 over 5 in for that x, positive 4 over 5 in for that y. Works there. Bottom equation, this has to go in a parenthesis. So I need to do x squared. It's going to be negative 22 divided by 5 squared plus, and then because it's a fraction, the 4 over 5 all should, should go in a parenthesis. So plus 4 fifths squared. When I hit enter, I better get 20 because the right hand side is 20. Works perfectly. So those are actually the perfect answers for problem 17. So just one problem each to do. So I'm going to do 20 and let you do 19. For problem 20, it's easy to solve the top for x. It's easy to solve the top for y. It's probably better to solve the top for y. And then your best choice is probably also to solve the top for y. So for number 20, I'm going to solve the top for y. I get x plus y equal to 3. I'm going to minus y from both sides, and I'm going to write x equal to 3 minus y. Having that minus y written second is probably going to help me. Next, I'm going to substitute and solve. You won't need a parenthesis, but I will need a parenthesis when I substitute because there's a minus in front of my y. So I'm going to take this 3 minus y, plug it in. Whoops. Oh, what a bad choice I made. I'm supposed to plug the 3 minus y in for, not there. I'm supposed to plug it in there and there. That's a mess. I don't think I want to do that. But let me do it because I said I'm going to do it. So I'm going to make this 3 minus y squared minus 5 times 3 minus y minus y equals to minus 7. That's really unfortunate. Let me deal with this, though. 3 minus y times 3 minus y is what 3 minus y squared is going to be. And then minus 5 times 3 minus y minus, I'm going to emphasize 1y, equals to minus 7. Let me foil this. First are 3 times 3, which is a 9. Outers are 3 times minus y, which is minus 3y. Inners are minus y times 3 is minus 3y. Lasts are minus y times minus y, which is plus y squared. Next multiplication, minus 5 times 3 is minus 15. Minus 5 times minus y is plus 5y. Bring down the minus 1y. Bring down the minus 7. The y squared is going to be written first. And then the minus 3y, minus 3y, and this plus 5y will all combine to be a minus y minus 1y, because minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6, plus 5 is minus 1, so I get minus 1y. And then the numbers on the right-hand side are positive 9 and minus 15, and those combine to be a minus... Oh, look at this, I forgot the minus 1y here. I should do minus 3y, minus 3y, 
plus 5y minus 1y. Huh. Minus 3 and minus 3 is minus 6. Plus 5 is minus 1. Minus 1 is minus 2y. I didn't think about that term. Luckily, I caught it before it was too late. And now 9 minus 15 is negative 6. Still have the negative 7 on the right side. I'm going to add 7 to both sides and get y squared minus 2y plus 1 equals to 0. That factors into y minus 1 times y minus 1. Still have the equal to 0. Set each of the parentheses equal to 0. They both give me the same answer of y equal to 1. Need to get an x for just one of those. An x is 3 minus y. So x is going to be 3 minus 1. x is going to be 2. I only get one answer. For number 20, my answer is x equal to 2, y equal to 1. I can check on the top equation real easy. In the top equation, I'd go 2 plus 1 equal to 3. That will give me 3 equal to 3. I'm going to check the bottom equation on my calculator. So to check 2 and 1 in for this x, I'm going to go 2 squared. Don't need a parenthesis because it's not negative, but it would be okay to put it in 1. And then minus 5 parentheses 2 for 2 for that x. And then minus, and then 1 for that y. When I add equals, it better give me negative 7, which it does, so it works in there. I've checked it manually in the top equation on my calculator in the bottom. So it checks. I know I'm good. That's the end of this section. So just give number 19 a go, and hopefully it's similarly diff easy or difficult, you know, similar to my problem anyways.